Hi there, Seattle School Scholars. My name is Mr. Gore. I'm a first and second grade teacher at Dunlap Elementary in the beautiful Rainier Beach neighborhood of Seattle. Um, I'm so glad to be here and... Oh, geez. Oh, cool. It's one of my students. Hey, Kennedy. How's it going? Hey, Mr. Gore. I've been finding coins on the ground all day and I have 67 cents. That is awesome, Kennedy. Thanks for letting me know. I know that you know how much I love treasure. Talk to you soon, Mr. Gore. Bye. Bye, Kennedy. Oh, that is so cool. Do you know, I always get so excited when I find even just a single coin on the ground, like a penny or something, and I think maybe it'll give me good luck. But it sounds like Kennedy must have really good luck because she just found 67 cents. I'm wondering, that's got me thinking, if she got, if she found 67 cents, what coins could those have been? Do you think you could help me figure this out? Let's do it. Well, so I know that there are four main coins, right? There's a penny worth one cent, nickels, they're worth five cents each. Dimes are worth 10 cents, and quarters, those are worth 25 cents. So if you have a jar of coins at home, you might use those to help you figure out all the different possibilities. Or um, if you don't, then you can use paper and pencil. I'm just going to draw right on this screen um, so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, but if you want to grab one of those, I'll wait for a moment some coins or paper and pencil. All right, so um, to draw coins, I don't have to draw all of the details of the coins, right? I could spend a long time doing that, but I'm just gonna draw a circle and put a P in it. And that will stand for a penny. I'm gonna draw a little bit bigger one for the nickel. Okay, and put an N for nickel. A littler one with a D for dime and a bigger one yet for with a Q for quarter. Okay, so let's see. Let's think of the ways that I might make um, 67 cents. Okay, I'm going to start with a quarter, um, and that was 25 cents. And I'm going to do another quarter, and that makes um, oh, 25 plus 25 is 50. Okay, and then I'm going to add another quarter, 25, 50, 75. Oh, whoops. That's more than I needed. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that. I can't use another quarter because that would be too much. Because I remember I'm trying to get to 67 cents. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna do some nickels. There's a nickel, it makes 55. 50 plus the five cents makes 55. Another nickel makes 60. Another nickel make 65, and then I can do a couple pennies to get up to 67. The size of my circles haven't been very consistent, but that's okay. 66, 67. So I found one way to make 67 cents with two quarters, three nickels, and two pennies. Nice. Um, let's see if I can come up with another way. I bet you're coming up with all kinds of ways right now. Um, ooh, what if I did this? This would be funny. One penny plus another penny makes two. Plus another penny makes three. Do you know what I'm doing? I won't make you sit through all of this. But we could do 67 pennies, right? And so when I don't have to do that, I'm going to put the three dots or an ellipses, right, to show that there's a lot of other pennies in there. And then it ends 
with 67. So you could, it's possible that Kennedy found 67 pennies. Probably not likely, but it's possible. So if you um, are at home watching this online, you can press the pause button. And I want you to see if you can come up with um, how many different combinations that you can come up with of different coins that you could use to add up to 67 cents. You can play this game with made up totals too. Ask somebody in your family to challenge you with a total number of cents, like 74 cents or 39 cents, and see how many different combinations of coins you can use to make that total. You can work together to come up with all of them that you can possibly get together, or you can set a time limit and see who can come up with the most in that time. Now, what if I told you that I knew exactly what coins Kennedy had found? Two of them were quarters, and she found a dime, and the rest were pennies, okay? So let's use this bar model to help figure out how many pennies she had. So we know that the total number of cents that she had was 67 cents. So I'm gonna write that on the bottom. The whole bar is 67 cents. Okay, and then I'm going to mark each quarter or each coin here. The first one is a quarter, and that is worth 25 cents. Okay, the next one, let's do green, is also 25 cents. Those take up most of our bar. And then we've got this dime, and that is worth 10 cents. So all together, 25 plus 25 plus 10, I know it's 25 plus 25 is 50, and then plus 10 makes 60. So we know that the coins that we have on here the two quarters and the dime together make 60 cents okay but what we're trying to figure out is this part so i'm going to put a question mark okay there are lots of ways to do this but we need to find the difference between 60 and 67 you may know it already but let's count on using i can use my fingers to help me okay maybe you can help me as well I'm gonna put 60 in my head, and then I'm gonna count on from there until I get to 67, ready? 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. So I have five, six, seven fingers up. That means that seven cents is missing still. And since pennies are worth one cent each, Kennedy must have found seven pennies in addition to her two quarters and her one dime. All right, let's take a quick look at this clock. So I bet you know a lot about a clock already, but let's go over some little things. Do you notice that there are 12 numbers on here? Why is that? Do you know how many hours there are in a day? That's right, there are 24 hours in a day, so why are there only 12? Well, it turns out in order for us to go through a whole day, the, the hour hand, that's this shorter, thicker hand, goes around the clock two times. So it goes around the whole clock two times, and each time it passes one of these hours or one of these big numbers, that's an hour, right? So this short hand, when it's facing, when it's between the 12 and the 1, it's 12 something. When it's between the one and the two, it's one something. I bet you remember that, huh? So there's also this longer, skinnier hand. That's called the, that's right, minute hand. And um, do you know how many minutes there are in every hour? Yeah, there's 60. So every time this minute hand passes one of these little tick marks, that is another minute. And there are 60 of those around this clock. 
And when the minute hand goes all the way around the clock one time, that is one hour. So there are 60 minutes in every hour. But there's also one more hand here. In this case, it's the skinniest one, and it's a different color. They often are a different color, and they're often the skinniest one. And this is the second hand, okay? Um, I want you to watch. I'm going to play it. Do you see that it moves one tick for every second? And like we said, there are 60 ticks around the clock, 60 seconds. So if it goes around, if the second hand goes around the clock one time for every minute, that means that it goes around the clock 60 times every hour and 1,440 times every day. Whoa, that's a lot of time. Let's spend one of those times, one minute, counting with Miss Vester. She's my awesome friend who teaches at South Shore Elementary. Take it away, Miss Vester. Let's have some fun. I'm going to count from zero to 60. And I want you to join me as I just grew into a beat as I count. So we're going to get ready and get started. Zero to 60. Get ready. Here we go. All right. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60! Thank you so much, Miss Vester. Um, oh my gosh. Mr. Phillips is calling me and I've been meaning to talk to him for a while. Hey, Mr. Phillips! How are you doing? Alright, there we go, there we go. <laughs> Man, you gotta keep asking for you. Yeah, good. I've just, um, you know, I've been so angry about all the stuff that's happening and, and uh, you know, personally I'm feeling, I guess, uh, I'm proud of the way that people are, are speaking out, but I'm just so angry about, um, you know, so much of what's happening in the world. Can I ask, and you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, I just wanted to check in and, you know, uh, it's, it's, I've got these big feelings and, and I can't even imagine what it might be like as an African American male in this country right now. Do you want to speak to that at all? Is that okay? Yeah, um, well, first and foremost, uh, thank you for acknowledging the anger. Um, you know, I am angry, I'm sad at the same time. Um, I think anything that you have to acknowledge that you have to change, you have to un unravel the ugly to make it beautiful again. Um, and everybody's fight is different, you know, like, I believe my fight is behind the educational walls to make sure students of color can access anything they, they can possibly get their, you know, their hands on, whether it be academic or even social development, you know, so that's, that's my fight. And I believe that with the hard work that is, I'm seeing taking place now, we have a bright future. It's going to take a while, but I, I believe it's going to be a bright future. That, thanks for that. Uh, yeah. Hey, is it um possible? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's four o'clock now. I have a, drum session uh here at 405 that runs for about 45 minutes and after that let me let me freshen up in about 20 minutes uh do you mind if i give you a call back then that'd be awesome yeah thank you so much for for taking uh, some time man uh, thank you. good to see you no bye. problem you bye. as well take care bye mr phillips is a really good drummer but i guess even really good musicians still can practice and get better 
So um, I got to figure out when I can call him back because he's a busy guy and I don't want to miss my chance. So maybe you can help me out. So his lesson starts at 4.05 and it goes for 45 minutes. You know what? Let's use a number line to try and figure this out. Okay. So Mr. Phillips' drum lesson starts at 4.05. It goes for 45 minutes. And then he said he needed about 20 more minutes to get ready. So what time will he be available to talk? Well, let's start off by um, recording on our number line what time his lesson starts. 4.05. Okay, and then I like to get to a whole 10, so I'm going to just make a jump of five minutes. Okay, and that makes it for 10. Okay, and then um, I guess that's five minutes and I need to add 40 more minutes. I think I'm going to do that in 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm going to add plus 10 minutes, plus 10 minutes, plus 10 minutes, and plus 10 minutes. So this is the 45 minutes of his lesson. From 4.10, 10 more minutes makes 4.20, 10 more minutes makes 4.30, 10 more minutes, more minutes makes 4.40, and then 10 more minutes makes 4.50. Will he be available at 4.50? No, because then he needs another 20 minutes to get ready. Okay, so I'm going to add another 10, or another, he needs 20 minutes, so I'm going to add 10 and another 10. So 450, that makes 460, and then 470. Oh, so he will be ready at 470. 470. Wait a minute. 470 doesn't sound right. What did I do wrong? Oh, I know. <laughs> at least I know that mistakes are opportunities to learn, right? Okay, so let's take a look at it again. I know what I did. Do you remember how many minutes there are in an hour? 60, right? So here where it says 460, that is actually not going to work because when it hits 60 minutes, it's the next hour. So I'm going to erase that 460 and I'm going to erase this 470 because 470 isn't a time. And then I'm going to fix it to say five o'clock and then 10 more minutes makes five, 10. All right, so I think I uh, figured it out. In Mr. Phillips will be ready for my phone call at 5.10. That's when I can call him again. Thanks for helping me to figure that out. So now it's time to get to math. That's what we're here for, right? So wait a second. Hold on, I think, I guess we've been doing math. We did some problem solving with money in order to figure out what coins Kennedy found on the ground. Then we counted seconds. Um, then we counted intervals of time on a number line in order to figure out when I could call Mr. Phillips back. That was all math. So I guess our job here is done. And I didn't even know we were doing math. Oh man. So this was your last math video of the school year. In case I don't see you, I want you to make sure that you're taking care of the people that you love, you're standing up for what you believe in, that you stay safe. You matter more than you know, and your teachers are anxiously awaiting your return to our classrooms. Take care.